particular video, I would like to provide you with some basic instruction regarding the process of coning and centering. Coning and centering is essential and the first component really of making any piece of pottery at the potter's wheel. So what I'd like to begin with is as you start with a piece of clay, uh, we are using a piece of pug clay and it already comes with uh, two flat sides but I like to form mine into the shape of a ball so let's begin by doing that. I did so by gently patting the clay into the shape of a ball. Now as I begin, I'm going to, I, I have a bat, a plastic bat, already set on the back ends on my wheel head. I'm going to place the ball of clay in what I believe to be the center of the bat, and I'm going to spin the wheel by hand just to validate that the ball of clay is relatively centered at this point. Once I've established that fact, I'm going to pat it down. Patting down the ball of clay helps to ensure that it is in fact stuck to the bat. Uh, we don't want to have that ball of clay flying off the bat at any point in time during the process of coning and centering or later on when we get to pulling. Okay. Uh, the next thing, now that I have this centered, I'm going to set my wheel speed to full speed. The wheel is spinning counterclockwise. Um, that's just how we've been trained to do it here in America. Uh, what I need to do next is wet my hands. Water is two things for a potter working at the wheel. Water is essential for lubrication. Water is also bad at times because the clay gets too soft and it will simply fall apart. So you will have to find what that balance of water actually is for you. It is essential though that you have your hands wet because you do need lubrication. So as I begin, I'm going to I'm going to basically make an X with my thumbs, put my fingers together. As I sit balanced with my feet on the floor and I'm sitting around the pan of the wheel just as if I were riding a horse. I want to maintain as much balance and control as I can when I'm working at the wheel. This is about a pound and a half worth of clay uh, and it'd be very easy for an inexperienced potter to lose the battle against a pound and a half of clay. So, let's take every advantage that we can. Make sure our hands are wet, the wheel's spinning at full speed, cross your thumbs over, put your fingers together, and gently grasp the clay and press down. This helps to get the clay stuck to the back. As I do this, I'm also keeping my arms, my elbows, tucked in against my, my waistline, against my hips. That provides me with additional control. So as I start to squeeze this, you can see that I'm relatively centering that and creating a little dome shape. So now that I've done that, my point of contact was here at about 7 and 5. 7 and 5 is, is respective of where my forearms are coming into the clay at and where my hands are contacting the clay. It's about 7 o'clock with the left hand, 5 o'clock with the right hand. So as I do that, now I'm ready to comb. My coning, I'm going to switch this up a little bit. My left palm will come in at about 7 o'clock. My right fingertips are going to contact the clay opposite that at about 1 o'clock. I have on the pan those numbers, 7 and 1, for this reference. So my left palm with my elbow tucked in and my forearm braced across my, across my leg I'm going to place my right thumb down here at the wrist, the bottom of my left thumb, lubrication, and I'm going to take my right fingertips and I'm going to squeeze those fingertips toward the heel of my left palm and move upward to create a cone shape. You always want to keep your hands at a cone shape when you're doing this. If your hands are straight up and down, you will have a straight up and down piece of clay. If your objective is to create a cone shape, you have to have your hands in that fashion. 
Now I'm ready to center. Centering is the portion where I'm pushing down. Here again, there's two primary methods for centering. In this case, I'm going to use just my left hand as the point of contact. The clay is going to be here. The cone of the clay is going to be kind of where my thumb and my palm come together. Again, my elbow is braced. My forearm is across my leg. I'm using a little bit of moisture. Only my thumb and my index finger are contacting the clay. And I push down slowly, and you can see that the top of this piece of clay is becoming centered. It is what is round, okay, and perfectly centered. The bottom, I've not yet reached that point, so it's not centered. As I continue to push downward, my index finger is wrapped over the top to prevent that clay from mushrooming out and creating a mushroom effect. I want my ball of clay to be intact, to maintain integrity. So as I do this, as I continue to push down, I push down until I have a piece of clay that I can work with. Relatively speaking, this piece of clay is now centered. Okay, I'm going to do this one more time. My left hand at 7 o'clock, my right fingertips at 1 o'clock, my right thumb here on my wrist at the base of the left, water for lubrication. I'm going to squeeze inward and move upward. The important part of this process is to make sure that you're applying an even amount of pressure across all of your fingers and across your palm. If you fail to apply even amount of pressure, you risk getting what I call as a volcano. You'll have a little shaft down the center here that would resemble a volcano. And then you're going to pull clay over it and close it up, and thus you'll have an air pocket. It's an easy fix, and that's fixable with the centering process. So you can see again I've created a cone. I can do this one more time and create, make that cone a little bit taller. But again, that's not necessary. What the coning and centering process does basically is two things. It gets your ball of clay centered on the bat so you can effectively create a pot. But it also makes that piece of clay, particularly if you had two pieces of clay put together, but it, it makes the piece of clay more uniform throughout. You want to get the moisture level even all the way throughout. Sometimes a piece of clay can be a little drier on the outside than it is at the inside. So the coning and centering process does those two things. It evens out the clay so it, it has the same consistency and, and moisture and feel all the way through. There's our bell for the end of this class period, so disregard that. And the centering process also gets you a centered piece of clay on the wheel head. So you can see here as I push this down, just with my thumb and my index finger. And then I'm going to come in here with my palm and just kind of finish truing it up, okay, so that I have then a centered piece of clay. I'll clean it up because now at this point I'm ready to move on to the next section, which I'll create in another video for you.